This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time right now is 427 here on our Wednesday morning. We want to thank you for starting your day with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrett. The weather outside right now is calm, quiet, but that is all going to change about 12 hours from now when we are going to get a lot of precipitation. We want to bring in our Alyssa Donovan here this morning so that you are all prepared because as you head to work this morning, things are going to be calm and dry, but as you leave work tonight, it's going to be a whole lot different. That's right, and that's what I want to talk about. So this morning, quiet conditions, not a problem on the roads, but as we head home tonight, we are going to see this wintry mix of precipitation that's probably going to start in the afternoon, probably around 1 or 2 p.m. We're going to start with that mix. A lot of us are going to see rainfall with that snow expected further north along an, a line of I-70 and further north, but we can't rule out seeing some of that snowfall to the south as well. That's going to start this afternoon. That's going to continue into the evening, overnight, and into tomorrow morning. So going home is going to be an issue. We have a winter weather advisory that starts at 1 p.m. today that lasts until 1 p.m. tomorrow. So not only tonight, but then tomorrow morning's commute might be a little dicey as well, just because we are going to see that potential potential of accumulating snow, which of course could cause some issues on the roads. All right, Alyssa, thank you. We'll keep a close eye on all of that. We are also keeping a close eye on New Hampshire this morning. Yeah, we're waiting to get all the primary results and it's looking like we have Bernie Sanders in the lead followed by Pete Buttigieg and then kind of a surprise, Amy Klobuchar taking third there. She had a great debate performance and looking like that's giving her a little bit of boost with some voters out there. So we're gonna be breaking down what this means, what's next as that race rolls on and so we'll have all the results for you this morning. And who is also bowing out now that yeah, those results are those. in, yes. Back here at home, we continue to follow a story out of Hendricks County. Parents gathering last night to voice their opinions, their concerns about the fact that a teacher and coach who has been accused of child seduction has not yet been fired by the district. Yeah, and for several months he was still on paid leave and so parents are now telling the board they want all of them to resign. So we'll have more on that story coming up from Hendricks County this morning. And finally in our hiring Hoosiers, the third and final part of our nannying series, we're going to talk to a working mom who explains why hiring a nanny was the only option really for their family because of their unique work schedules. So she wants other families to know that you have this option and you can continue to both have mom and dad working thanks to hiring a nanny. So we'll hear more from her. Child care can be such a barrier for so many families coming up and we'll have news, weather and traffic to kick off your Wednesday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. The time right now is 4.30 here on your Wednesday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Alyssa Donovan here with us this morning. Alyssa, quiet, calm right now, 12 hours from now, going to be a world of difference. That's right. So this is the calm before the storm. It's going to be a quiet start to our day, but we do have that potential of that wintry mix moving in. I should say we do have that wintry mix moving in with the potential of accumulating snow along with that. But you can see right now on our Storm Team 6 radar, things are quiet and calm. Calm, but just to the south of us, we have this system starting to brew. This low pressure system is approaching. That is going to bring us the potential of rain, also freezing rain, as well as snow mixed in there. So we're keeping an eye on that today, expecting that to move in in the afternoon, moving into those southern counties as early as about the noon hour. And then we are going to see that spread to the north as we head into the afternoon and evening. That will continue to impact us overnight as well, which is why we do have this winter weather advisory going into effect this afternoon. That's going to last until 1 p.m. on Thursday. That's mainly for Indianapolis and areas to the north. Those are the spots that we are expecting that accumulation. Looking at the potential of anywhere from two to five inches and a of course, that depends on where we see that rainfall and that mixture of snow coming in. Temperatures today starting in the 20s. We're starting quiet this morning. We'll climb into the mid 30s this afternoon with that rain snow, snow mix coming in. That's going to impact us tomorrow as well. Much colder temperatures behind this system. All of those details coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Alyssa, thank you so much. Here is a live look right now at traffic in the downtown area. I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. Traffic here is moving along up to speed this morning. No issues to slow you down. So let's take a turn to the west side. I-475 
65 at Sam Jones Expressway. Traffic here is moving along just fine. A heads up though, as you are traveling through areas near Monrovia, we do have eastbound I-70 closed right now. This is for bridge construction. That's at State Road 39. That's scheduled to reopen at 5 a.m. So pretty shortly here this morning. Just want to make you aware of that if you're traveling through that area. Well, America has, has its first declared state victor in the 2020 campaign. Senator Bernie Sanders has won the New Hampshire primary. Pete Buttigieg was not far behind, but other front runners had a tough night with two candidates even dropping out. ABC's Trevor Alt has the breakdown from New Hampshire. New Hampshire voters have spoken. Senator Bernie Sanders wins the first in the nation primary. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Sanders had won New Hampshire in 2016 by 22 points, but this victory far closer, edging out Mayor Pete Buttigieg by only a few thousand votes. A campaign that some said shouldn't be here at all has shown that we are here to stay. Rounding out the top tier, Senator Amy Klobuchar, riding a late wave of support from her most recent ABC debate performance, and pushing a message of unity and sensibility. Donald Trump's worst nightmare is that the people in the middle, the people who have had enough of the name calling and the mud slinging, yeah. have someone to vote for in November. <laughs> But for several candidates, the night was underwhelming at best. Andrew Yang and Senator Michael Bennett have now dropped out, while Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden, once frontrunners nationally, both finished with single-digit support. Still, they're vowing to fight on. All right, come from, that's the opening bell, not the closing bell. And remember, these state votes are about more than just seeing who wins. They're about collecting delegates for the nomination. And that math can be a little bit odd. Even though Senator Bernie Sanders has gotten more votes in Iowa and New Hampshire, Mayor Pete Buttigieg has earned two more delegates than Sanders has. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Trevor, thank you. Back here at home, investigators are looking at body camera and squad car footage to find out what led up to a police shooting in Lawrence. Police say an officer shot a man suspected of shoplifting from a clothing store around 2.30 yesterday afternoon on East 56th Street at the I-465 interchange. It happened after a chase involving two suspects. Assistant Police Chief Gary Woodruff says officers were not shot at by the suspects and he was not sure if either was armed. The man who was shot is in critical condition. Police arrested the second suspect. Investigators say they both had outstanding warrants, one for cocaine possession, one for a probation violation. Woodruff says the department should have an update on the investigation later today. At 434 this morning, Metro Police are working overtime to solve two recent shootings that killed five people on the northeast side. Chief Randall Taylor says after hearing from the community and the families of the victims, he felt extra work had to be done. Police say no arrests have been made in either shooting, one that left a subway employee dead and another killing four at an apartment complex. To help the search, Taylor launched a special homicide tip line where anyone who knows something can speak directly to detectives who are standing by for the next 48 hours to answer phones. Chief Taylor is also staying late, taking calls himself. You know, um, I'm not sure how big of an impact it'll have, but I'm just trying to do anything that I can to, to generate some responses. Our detectives do great work and they work these things hard, um, but they need some help with this and, uh, and I want to try to give them that. Well, you can call that tip line at 317-327-3475. It is open now through Thursday afternoon. If you would like to remain anonymous, Crime Stoppers will always have someone standing by at 317-262-TIPS. An Indianapolis woman says her life will never be the same after a dump truck crashed into her SUV. Now she's filed a lawsuit against the driver and the trucking company. Sue Ann Bodine is paralyzed from the waist down after a dump truck crashed into to her SUV on Rockville Road in September. The 11 vehicle pileup killed a couple from Danville. Sue Ann is suing the driver and the Zionsville based trucking company, North American Environmental Services. Court records show Danny Williams was behind the wheel of the dump truck. He told police he had been snorting heroin. Sue Ann now relies on around the clock nursing care and her medical bills are mounting. In just moments, my life was in a shambles. Um, my hopes and dreams for the future 
are gone, at least at this moment. Um, I can't drive. I can't work. There's a lot of medical problems that I never would have anticipated. The lawsuit alleges the dump truck was underinsured and the company negligently hired and supervised Williams and that Williams failed to operate his commercial motor vehicle with reasonable care. Williams is facing seven criminal charges stemming from the crash. His trial is scheduled for March 18th. We reached out to Williams and the trucking company for a response. So far, we have not received any statements. Today, more than 2,400 sets of fetal remains found last year in the Illinois garage and a car of an Indiana abortion doctor will be buried. Those remains were from abortion doctor Ulrich Klopfer. He performed those abortions in Indiana. Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill's office says that they will be memorialized at a grave site at South Lawn Cemetery and Palmer Funeral Home in South Bend. Klopfer died before the fetal remains were found in September. An ordinance aimed at better protections for pets in Carmel will be introduced next Monday. In the fall, Hamilton County Commissioners overhauled the animal cruelty ordinance to define things like adequate shelter and medical care. But that only applies to county incorporated areas, not cities. Councilor Adam Austin is behind the new similar proposal in Carmel. The whole point of this ordinance is we just want to make sure that everyone in Carmel is happy, healthy, and safe. And that really does apply to everyone, including pets, our furry friends. The ordinance would also prohibit pet stores from selling dogs obtained from puppy mills or backyard breeders. New this morning, a closing date is being set for the Indianapolis Public Library's Fountain Square branch. The library's closing was announced back in 2015 as a part of a plan to relocate services to the new West Perry branch. At Tuesday's meeting, the Public Library Board of Trustees preliminarily approved Fountain Square facility to close May 8th. The board says the early move will save the library more than $60,000. A nonprofit organization Indy Reads will then move into the Virginia Avenue location in August. The closing date still needs to be approved by the full library board. That meeting will be held on February 24th. After beating IU in Bloomington, Purdue's men's basketball team took a turn for the worse last night against 13th ranked Penn State. They played at home and tried to overcome the Nittany Lions 12 point lead at half. They pulled within seven points with a minute left, but fell short with a final score of 88 to 76. The Boilermakers are now 14 and 10 overall. They head to Ohio State to face the Buckeyes on Saturday. The Trump administration is proposing a big change to how the government regulates tobacco products. Coming up, the newest plan would take oversight away from the FDA. And Samsung is hoping to bring back the flip phone. Still ahead, a look at the company's newest technology featuring professional grade cameras and foldable screens. Alyssa. And we are starting quiet today, but it is a Storm Team 6 alert day. That's because we have rain and snow chances moving in this afternoon. I'll let you know what you need to know coming up. Days from 4.30 to 7. The Trump administration is hoping to change the way tobacco e-cigarette products are regulated. The latest proposal would remove those products from the Food and Drug Administration's control. Instead of the FDA, a new agency based out of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services would take over. The plan was laid out in President Trump's new $4.1 trillion budget. The administration says the new agency would only focus on tobacco and its impact on public health. They also believe it would respond quicker to the growing complexity of new products. The proposal comes after the FDA received criticism for softening its stance on flavored vaping, vaping products due to industry pressure. However, critics like the American Lung Association are concerned that the plan could give more control to the tobacco industry. At 443, the federal government is also making new efforts to get veterans into math and science careers. The Supporting Veterans in STEM Careers Act will make edu STEM education programs more available and affordable. It will also coordinate with the federal agencies to boost similar courses. The goal is to help veterans transition to civilian life. Researchers at Syracuse University say vets are in, at an advantage for these types of careers and because that's because the military is already very STEM oriented. Three high school students are suing Delta Airlines after one of its planes dumped fuel over several schools. It happened last month in the Los Angeles area. At least 60 people were treated for injuries and sickness from the fuel. The Delta flight was headed to Shanghai but turned around shortly after takeoff.
takeoff due to an in-flight situation. The lawsuit alleges that there was no need to dump the fuel, but the plane did anyway. It also claims that according to FAA rules, the plane was not high enough to release the fuel. Four LA teachers have also filed a lawsuit. At 444, coronavirus evacuees in California threw their face masks into the air in celebration now that their time in quarantine is over. The first group of Americans who fled the virus in China have been at a March Reserve Air Base for 14 days now. Many of the evacuees were department workers. After screening most of them, planned to, they planned to board buses to nearby airports and head home. No one in that group tested positive for the virus. Some evacuees say they're thankful for the government's precautions. We're grateful that we did do the full quarantine yeah. in a way because at first I was kind of nervous to go back to my family. Like what if I did get them sick? Yeah. Um, so now that we've had 14 days, uh, I mean, the, there's, no there's literally no chance we could have it. Hundreds of other people who evacuated Wuhan last week are still counting down the days until their two-week quarantine ends. They were flown to bases in California, Nebraska, and Texas. Here at 445, we got to check in with Alyssa Donovan in today's forecast. It's a Storm Team 6 alert day, Alyssa, for what's going to happen later today, not this morning. That's right. So this morning, things are quiet. It's going to be a calm start to our day, but that's going to change quickly as we head into the afternoon. So don't worry about this morning's commute. By this evening and tomorrow morning, those are the commutes that we we are concerned about because we have this low pressure system approaching that's bringing us rain and snow potential as we head into the afternoon, the evening, overnight, and into tomorrow morning. We could see accumulation anywhere between two and five inches. A lot of those higher totals will be to the north, but we can't rule out seeing some of those larger totals right around Indianapolis as well. So what's going on right now is we are starting with just those cloudy skies this morning, and you can see that on our satellite and radar, but just to the south of us, just to the south West, we have this low pressure system that's building and starting to approach. As that does, we are going to start with the potential of some rain before we start to switch to that rain snow mix. Now, this winter weather advisory is in effect starting today at 1 p.m. and it lasts until 1 p.m. on Thursday. And you can see really that's really along a line of I-70 and to the north. And that's because those are the areas that are expecting that snowfall and especially those higher totals with the highest totals to extreme northern counties. So that's why we do have that winter weather advisory in effect because this is going to impact your evening commute as well as your morning commute. So looking at the timeline of this, Truecast showing us here we are at the noon hour. Things are still very quiet and then we are going to start to see that rain snow mix moving into our southwest counties by about 1 or 2 p.m. this afternoon. Could see some freezing rain mixed in there as well as the system moves in, but we are going to start with rain for many of us and then we'll continue to see rain along our southern counties as this moves through with that snow, mainly for uh, areas to the north along an I-70 line to the north. That's where we are expecting some of that accumulating snow totals. So we'll continue to see the potential of that rain snow mix through the evening, overnight, and then as this system moves out, we are going to see that switch to just snow. But again, most of that is going to be focused along I-70 and areas to the north. So those are the concentrations of this system. So taking a look at snowfall totals, we have a couple different models that we look at when we assess this and some of our higher totals again are really focused on those northern counties that's where we're looking at the potential of up to five inches and then along i-70 and indianapolis maybe a half an inch to an inch two inches right along uh, Lafayette and areas to the north. So of course that also depends on where we really see that system set up as we see it move through. If we see that rain staying a little further south and some of that snow staying a little further south, we could see some of those higher totals along I-70 and into Indianapolis. So just be aware of that. Either way, it is going to be a messy commute tonight and tomorrow. Taking a look at our future Thursday, Friday, those temperatures start to drop. By Friday morning, temperatures will be into the single digits. So as we see the system move out, we're going to be left with a cold blast that's going to take our temperatures very low. Today, we're starting with those temperatures in the 20s, cloud, cloudy skies to start, quiet conditions, and then we'll start to see those showers for some southern counties by about the noon hour. The rest of us will see that wintry mix move in this afternoon. Highs will be into the mid and upper 30s, a little colder for your Thursday, those snow showers lingering in the morning, and then things will dry out by the afternoon. Much colder as we head into Friday morning, six degrees expected for our overnight low, and then 20 degrees for our daytime high on Friday.
All right, Alyssa, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic this morning as you're heading out early on this Wednesday. We told you about that eastbound closure of I-70 out in the Monrovia area near State Road 39. It looks like that is all wrapped up this morning and lanes are back open. Here's a look near Old State Road 267. You can see traffic is quiet both eastbound and westbound on I-70 to our west, so it is good news. Let's take a look at our traffic now map right now. You can see around the metro area, no crashes to slow you down, so that is great news. Let's take you over to the west side here in Indianapolis, I-465 and the Sam Jones Expressway. You can see lots of traffic there in the off-ramp area. Everything's traveling smoothly, though, so that is great news for your commute. SeaWorld says its trainers will no longer stand or ride on dolphins in their shows. The move follows nearly a year of pressure from people for the ethical treatment of animals, or PETA. But SeaWorld says that had nothing to do with the changes, calling PETA a group of, quote, ill-informed activists. Instead, SeaWorld said it's, quote, continually evolving its animal presentations for both guests and their animals. They also insist the practices are not harmful to dolphins. At 4.50, the $26 billion merger between T-Mobile and Sprint has been approved. After years of efforts, a federal judge ruled Monday that the nation's third and fourth largest wireless carriers would be allowed to combine. The judge said he didn't think the companies would, quote, pursue anti-competitive behavior. The ruling rejected the lawsuit by a dozen states against the merger. The new company will keep T-Mobile's name and could be finalized in early April. Samsung has unveiled its latest smartphone, the Galaxy S20. The company showed off the phone's new camera, saying it's capable of taking professional-grade photos and videos. The line has three versions, which are all 5G compatible and also have a bigger battery. They range in price from nearly $1,000 to $1,400. They also released their new foldable phone. It's called the Z Flip, and it's reminiscent of the flip phones of the late 90s and early 2000s. The square shape can open up into one large screen. The purple and black Z Flips will be released Friday. The new Galaxy phones are available for pre-order online on the 21st. Some students in Nebraska did more than a bake sale for their school fundraiser. After the break, how they raised thousands of dollars with a game of donkey basketball. And parents' outrage as they address the school board for the first time since a teacher and coach was charged with child seduction. New at 5, how the Northwest Hendricks County School Board is reacting amid calls for all of its members to resign. But first... I'm Vinny Politan. Coming up today on Court TV, our continuing coverage of the Harvey Weinstein rape trial, which is rapidly drawing to a close. Both sides preparing their closing arguments, which will happen this week live from New York. We will have the latest for you. Also, uh, we are covering the case involving this man, Michael Keatley, former ice cream man accused of a shooting spree, a double murder. Another big case down in Tampa, Florida. Florida. We'll have live testimony for you there. That's all coming up today on Court TV. Don't forget, you can watch Court TV live right on your mobile device by visiting CourtTV.com. It is 4.52. We'll be right back. Students in Nebraska found a unique way to raise money with donkeys. Riders saddled up in a high school gymnasium for a game of donkey basketball. The idea is simple but not easy. Score a basket while riding on a donkey. Many people fell off the stubborn animals and there was also a cleanup crew on hand for any accidents. Organizers say the game raised about $2,000 to benefit the local future farmers of America. I like watching all the people get thrown off. Donkeys are like, get off Oh, me. yeah, yeah. I kind of feel bad for the donkeys. Like, look at it. <laughs> I know, they don't want to be there. They're like, oh. where the heck are we? I've never yeah. seen anything like this. They're yeah. like, I just want some grass to chew yeah. on or something. <laughs> what is going on here? All right, as we're heading out today, no problems this morning, Alyssa, but that's going to change. Yeah, that's right. So we have a low pressure system approaching. That's going to bring us the potential of rain and snow coming in. Could see accumulating snow. Most of the accumulating snow will be along a line of I-70 to the north. We're looking at potential totals between two and five inches. Those five inch totals will be extremely north. So looking more like two inches right around central Indiana. Winter weather advisory goes into effect at 1 p.m. today.